Wednesday night was awesome. Had a great, great service Wednesday night. Man, I'm telling you, God is doing some stuff. If you're, if you're, going, you're going to sit around, mess out. You're going to miss out. Sitting around waiting for God to do something. Waiting for a move of God. Listen, you're not waiting for a move of God. You're supposed to be a move of God. Come on, help me out. I ain't waiting for one. I am one. Woo! Preach on, preacher. I'm going with you. David said, good luck. I said, well, I'm going to preach in the house. Don't matter. No matter, this is what you get. What you see is what you get. Yes. And this is who I am. How many brought your Bible with you? Good. How many brought the equivalent thereof? Tablet. Phone. Something. Something's got a Bible on it. Amen. Something has the word Bible on it. I don't care. Whatever. You got something. Amen. If you have your Bible, chapter 1 Samuel, chapter 16. Chapter 16. I'm going to read some of the script, same scripture I read Wednesday night, but I'm going to go a different direction on it this morning. And so if you uh, miss Wednesday, you can go to YouTube, uh, go to Temple of Praise PCG, and look it up. And you will be blessed. You will be blessed. You will be blessed. Um, just a quick synopsis of the trip. Uh, I had a great time. Thank you all for allowing me to go. I uh, got to meet with some sure. wonderful people. Uh, we got to go to a... Uh, an Air Force graduation, 50th anniversary of the, of the war from 1967, and they were graduating their pilots, and then Yahoo was there, the president was there. Uh, we, had, we talked to some people that said, how did y'all get in here? And we said, we got tickets. And they said, well, how did you get tickets? And they, were, they invited us to come. And they said, well, I don't understand how you guys got in here because there's people that get their last dollar to get in here and can't get in, and you guys just walked in? I said, yeah. We, I, I listen, the favor of God ain't always fair. <laughs> favor ain't fair all the time. Man. Well, that's not fair. They live there all their lives. That's their home country. They should be to go see their own Air Force pilots graduate. I can't help. Don't, don't hate me because I'm blessed. Man, man God, God bless us. This was kind of cool. It was kind of creepy. Um, they had big screens so you could see who was speaking. And they had these, uh, these guys marching on the tarmac. And they're making designs. And they had a... a, a I guess real real time, I guess you would call it, real time satellite imaging of what they were making on the screens. So you wonder, who's watching you right now? Who watched you drive to this church? Who watched you go to Walmart? Who, who watched you cut that? Who watched you cut me off? I go, and somebody, come on, help me just a minute. Now, who, who, who's really watching you and what's going on? It was kind of cool. It was kind of creepy. I, I knew that we had satellites, and I knew that Israel had satellites, but I didn't know it was real time. I mean, they, you could watch them as they were marching and making the designs. They flew some aircraft that aren't even commissioned yet to fly, but they flew them in, in that, in that uh, graduation. And it was really, really cool. Got to go to the border uh, uh, patrol area because you're, you are part of this. You helped build a, uh, a recreation area for the Border Patrol agents in Jerusalem. You didn't, probably didn't even know you did that, but you did. And uh, and what happens is this. All those kids are 18 to 21 years old because they, they have to serve when they get out of high school. The guys have to serve 30 months. The girl, I think it's 22 or 21, something like that, months. And they have to serve. And so there's all these young, these, these young people, 18 to 21 years old. They don't even have televisions in their recreation area because it is a luxury. Because they spend all their money trying to keep people from blowing them up. Okay? And so uh, we, you, you are part of building a, a recreation area that has a gazebo, park benches, a fake grass, some trees, and a place for them to go hang out and just sit around and talk and drink coffee and drink whatever they want to do in, in their barracks. And for me to about her uh, sister uh, Norma, wave, wave your hand, sister Norma, wave your hand. That, that, that's how far the PLO was away from us. The PLO is right across the fence. There's burn places all over the fence where they throw Molotov cocktails every night at the Border Patrol and try to, I don't know, set the fence on fire. I don't know what they're trying to do because they can't hurt those armed cars. But anyway, uh, they, there's, there's burned out spots and we're that close to the PLO and the fence. And, uh, and so you guys are part of that. The church is a part of that. You guys did that. Also uh, got to go to, uh, uh, we're baptizing some people in the River Jordan. And, uh, and that, this part of the Jordan is just up from the Dead Sea. And it's like uh, from here to maybe the sound booth is that how wide the Jordan River is. I don't think it's quite that wide. And this is a different place that Tommy and I got to go. It's just even more narrow. And on the other side of the sound booth would be the, the country Jordan. And we are in the River Jordan and then we're in Israel. And so we're baptizing people in the River Jordan. And, and uh, I noticed there were some young people with some machine guns sitting watching us, which is kind of creepy, but it's their country, whatever. And so... Uh, 
Because when you get there, there's nothing there but a gift shop, a bathroom, a changing room, and a shower, and a place to baptize. That's all there is. I thought it was kind of weird. There would be some soldiers there. And so we got talking to them after we got done. And uh, they said, see right over that ridge? We're like, yeah. There's four Jordanian soldiers in camouflage watching you, making sure you don't get on their side. And so that's why we're here. We're watching make sure that they don't shoot you. Like, oh, well, I think I'll stand over here. <laughs> so, so I stood, I stood, I stood where I was not in gunshot uh, area. And so anyway, uh, got to go do that. Got to meet with some uh, wonderful people. Um, it, it's just, there's more than I can tell you in the, in the next uh, five minutes. Uh, but thank you again for allowing me to go. This is my travel partner, Tommy. Uh, it was just kind of, kind of strange. Uh, not having t uh, Tommy with me, he was, yeah, he had to go with his wife, whatever. And so, uh, uh, so it was. Uh, it was fun, and uh, I appreciate it. Very, very enlightening. Very, uh, it's, it's really weird that it wasn't, it wasn't so much, wow. It was like, okay. So this is the significance of that. Okay, I get it. Because I've, in the last 18 months, I've done some studying on some of the places that we've gone. And so then I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. I get it. I get it. And so uh, I appreciate you guys for allowing me to go. Uh, it's really always cool to go walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Uh, you can take the very same roads that Jesus took from Caiaphas' house to his trial. You can see you can walk the very same stones that he walked. Uh, it's very, very, uh, very humbling, very uh, neat to do that. So I appreciate you guys allowing me to go do that. Thank you very much, and I love you. Thank you so much. Um, listen, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit about David. Do some, i got 30 minutes. Can I take 35? Yeah. I'm taking 40. So it doesn't matter. All right. So here we go. So if you need to go, I, I love you. It's okay. You're going to miss the best part. But go ahead and do it. That's right. Here we go. Uh, if you have your Bible, turn to uh, uh, 1 Samuel 16, verse 11 through 13. 16, 11 through 13. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. And there, he, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. And he was ruddy with bright eyes, excuse me, with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. And then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the... Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for another opportunity to preach the word this morning. God, I thank you for every person that's represented here, every family that's represented here. I thank you for them. I ask that you just bless this place today. God, help me to preach right, help me to do right, and help me to be right in your name. And Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 I'll talk to you about some of the young Davids. I talked to you uh, Wednesday night about some of the young Davids, right? How the remains of them are outside are outside of the house because they've been dismissed, they've been discounted, and they're really not, and they've really been disinterested in what's going on in the house. We talked about that Wednesday night how how David was dismissed by his family. He was dis, he was uh, he was discounted by his by his brothers, and he was really disinterested in what was going on on the inside of the house because. Had he known, had he really wanted to be in the house, he could have been in the house. There was no blockade to keep him from going in the house. He said, yeah, but he was tending sheep. I understand that. But also when Jesse said to David, go take this food to your brothers, he left the sheep with the keeper and went to do what his daddy told him to do. So if had his daddy told him to come into the house, he could have come into the house. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he's really disinterested in what Samuel's doing because he, everybody in town knew Samuel was there because the Bible says when Samuel got to the town, they came out to meet him and say, are you here peaceably or not? And he said, yeah, I'm here in peace. Okay, whew, good. And so he went to Jesse's house. And so he could have been there. He knew that Samuel was there. He was just really just interested in the anointing process that was going on in the house. Can somebody help me a minute? Okay. And so David was separated. He was alone from, he was separated from his family. He was in the field and his family was in the house. You with me? Yes, God. Yes. This morning, I, I, I see this morning that there, there are some people that have uh, their families here and there's some people that some of them are not here this morning. And so they are, they are, they are separated, right? Some people are in the house where the anointing is and some are at home where the sleep is. Some are at bedside assembly this morning, right? Come on now. Yes. 
some are still getting sleepies out of their eye because, you know, it's just 11.30. It's really hard to get to church on Sunday morning because you have to get up by 9. 30 ish. I never did understand that excuse. That is a bunch of nonsense to me. It's just so early. <gasps> really? We start at 11 if we're church. If you can't get out of bed and get around by 11, Amen. Yes. <laughs> you just don't want to. Amen. You just don't want to. Let's just be honest. Can we not just be honest and say, I didn't want to come to church? Can we just be honest and say, I'm, really not, I'm not really interested in the anointing in the house? Can we say that I'm really, I'm really dismissed by some people so I really don't care about your anointing, Brother Jeff? I really don't care about what's going on because I'm, I'm really disinterested? Can we say that I'm really, I'm really kind of discounted by people so I really don't really care about being in church with you today? I was talking to Sister uh, Kim one day about some things, about a group of people she was talking to that said, oh, y'all wouldn't let us come to your church. Not this Kim, Kim Dallas. And uh, that... Uh, you know, they would let us come to your church because we don't have the right clothes and all that stuff. So they feel like they're disconnected. They feel like they're discounted before they ever walk in here. They're really not interested in what's going on here because they don't know me. Amen. And they don't know you. Amen. They, they, they feel like they've been dismissed without ever coming and finding out. And are you with me? Yeah. Amen. Right. Are y'all looking at me other phrase? So, so they really don't they really don't know if they fit in or not because they really haven't even given us a try. But they've been kind of disinterested in the house of God because the house of God seems to have nothing for them. Right. Come on, help me a minute. Praise God. I'm gonna preach it again. Okay. So they feel like the house of God really doesn't have what they need because they've seen us at Walmart. They've seen, they've worked, and they've been the wait staff at restaurants when we get out of church and come and act like a fool at the church because we didn't get our water on time. Amen. Oh, yes. Free preacher, believe I will. You know, you're not just a Christian in the church. You're supposed to be a Christian outside the church. Amen. Yes. And you leave two dollars tip on a fifty dollar bill. You're lucky you get a water glass thrown at your head. Praise God. Because I guarantee that's how they feel because I did it. Amen. I know exactly how it is. I know how exactly that is to put up with all the nonsense. I, this is cold. Right? This, I, you know what that is? Water glass. Taking your water glass because yes. there's 75 other people here we're getting water for, but you're the most important with your water. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Preach yes. on, preach it. Praise God. That's yes. good preaching. Yes. I, I didn't say you're not supposed to get waited on. I didn't say you're not supposed to have good service. I didn't say you're not supposed to have, I said you're supposed to be a Christian and act right. Amen. And yes. say, hey, what is your name? Jesus. Hey, hey, Sally. Hey, Sally. My name's Jeff. This is my wife, Naomi. Hey, thank you for being here today. And yes. thank you for waiting on us. Right. Thank you, Jesus. And I guarantee you, my water must be full all time long, Thank you, Jesus. You know yes. why? Because I didn't discount her. I didn't dis I didn't dis disconnect with her. I connected with Sally. Right. Amen. And Sally, and listen, I, and you can't do that and put a God bless you and put a dollar on the table. Yeah. You can't do that. Now, I don't know where I got off on that. I don't know. But here, Thank let me just share something yes. with you. Yes. Let me share something with you. So y'all better act right when y'all go to a restaurant. So here's the deal. So whenever you, you are supposed to be, you're supposed to be a Christian, not only inside the church, but outside the church. Yes. In everything that we do, we're supposed to be a blessing and not a curse. Amen. We're not supposed to bring people down. We're supposed to lift people up. We're not supposed to tell people one thing, you know, you need to live for God. Well, we're living like hell in, in private. Help me, somebody. So David felt separated from his family because David was out there in the field while everybody else is in the house. So I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Do you have family members right now who feel separated from you because they feel dismissed by you and discounted by you because maybe you were trying to do the right thing and maybe you were trying to help them and maybe you were giving them tough love because you forgot where you came from and hmm. And you separated from them because I just can't be around you. Wait a minute. I didn't say you had to participate. And I say you had to permit in your house. I didn't say you had to do all those things. But at some point, at some point, this goes a long way. Now look. Yes, praise God. That goes a long way. 
I don't care what they're wearing. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care how they are. I don't care if they're your uncle, your cousin, your brother's uh, stepbrother that you don't even like. You have, I don't care if there's somebody that you just you embarrass to turn into your family. That goes a long way to tell them, hey, <clears throat> I'm here. I love you. I love you. Listen, he was separated. He was alone. They were in the house where the anointing was. Are you with me? Amen. But he was anointed. But the anointed one, I'm sorry, was in the field. Wait a minute. His whole family is in the house where Samuel's at with the anointing oil. The anointing oil is in the house. The, the, what, what, what does the anointing oil represent? Somebody help me. Our God. The Spirit of God, right? Yes. Yeah. The Holy Ghost, right? Yes. It's okay Amen. to say Holy Ghost in the Pentecostal church. Amen. Yes. Okay, I don't want to scare nobody, but it's okay to say Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay, and so it's okay. And so the, the anointing oil represents the Holy Ghost. And so we're supposed to have that anointing in our lives, correct? Yes, I mean. Okay, we're supposed to have that. And so we have this little lighthouse. There's the lighthouse. And so we have this little lighthouse. I don't know why. I think it used to have aftershave in it. That's what it looks like. And someone put oil in it. And so I, it's a lighthouse because we're showing us the light of the world and it, it represents it represents the anointing, it represents healing, it represents Amen. a lot of things. But we're going to use it right now as just the Holy Ghost to represent it. And so in the house, the anointing of God is there, right? Amen, yes. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I think you're right. Okay, anyway. And so, look what you've done. And so here's the deal. <laughs> here's, here's the deal. So the anointing was in the house, but David was outside where? In the field. So the anointing was there for David, but David wasn't where the anointing was. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. David was not in the vicinity of the anointing, though he was the one chosen to be anointed. Come on, help. Amen. And so what the problem is this, is that we have family members, we have people who have felt dismissed and alone and separated, who are outside of these walls, who know that God has chosen them for something they just don't know what to do with it. Amen. Amen. And they feel disinterested and disconnected from the house of God because they're not really interested in what we're doing in here. Come on, help me just a minute. Amen. Listen, the only time they're really interested in what we're doing is if we put a cross somewhere that they offend somebody. Yes, praise God. It's amazing to me. At ECU, Thank you. did everybody see what's going on at ECU with the chapel? Stupidest thing I've ever seen. I, I was in Israel and I thought, this is absolutely stupid. Yes. It's a chapel. Praise God. They took the crosses out of the inside and the Bibles out of the inside. And then somebody's offended because there's a cross on a Christian chapel. Well, don't look at it, moron. I, I don't, don't, but you can have any rap star in the world with chains and a cross hanging, and they're not offended to death at all. Amen. Amen. It's, Amen. The, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my It's not they're offended. They just want to see if they can get away with it. Yes. And we're like, oh, well, we don't want to be controversial. Then don't get saved if you don't be controversial. Amen. Don't live for God if you don't want to be controversial. Don't, don't be a Christian. Because if you want to be a Christian, just by saying that I identify with Christ makes me controversial. Amen. Amen. It makes me controversial to say I identify myself as a Christian. Yes. Thank you. That's Jesus. what it does. Thank you, Jesus. Because I am a C. I am a C-H. I'm a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N. Come on. That's what I am. And I'm Christ. And I'm affiliated with Christ. And so I have I, that's who I am. Thank and so God. on the outside, there are Davids who don't know what to do with what God has called them to do. They just know they don't fit in. But they don't know why they don't fit in. And it's because they're anointed. They're a chosen anointed. But they're not where the anointing's at. Are you with me at all? Amen. You understand what I'm telling you? And so David was alone and separated from his family. The sheep were anointed. Now, Brother Jeff, that's a stretch. That's not a stretch. The sheep were anointed because David was anointed. Amen. The sheep were alive because David was anointed to be a shepherd. David snatched a lamb out of a lion's mouth and a bear's mouth. That don't happen. And then because he was anointed, the sheep were anointed to live because David was anointed to be a, to be a, a sheep killer killer. 
That's what he was. He wasn't afraid to be alone with the sheep. Right, yeah. Help me, somebody! Somebody, yeah. so, so, you guys are so afraid that you, to be alone with yourselves. Yeah. Well, I have to have somebody in my life. Yeah. You can't even live with you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But you want somebody else to live with you. You don't even like you. But you expect somebody else to come and make you whole and complete. The birds will sing. No, you're going to drive somebody crazy. Because you don't, you're not whole yourself. You're not even whole yourself. See, we look at it this way. A marriage is supposed to take two halves and make a one. No. It's not half the son, half the father. And the, it's, not, it's not the father, half the son, and half the Holy Ghost to make up the Trinity, is it? It's the Father, one, the yeah. Son, one, and the Holy Ghost, one, and they come and become one, right? Amen. Okay, that's a free marriage seminar for you. Amen. Okay, and so here's the deal. Two ones come together and make one, one. in front in God. Yeah. If you're half a person, you're going to make somebody miserable. Amen. You're going to make somebody, you're going to make yourself miserable. You're going to make somebody else miserable. You're not, you're not there yet. I don't care if you're 72 years old and you're and you're not and you still think you're half a person, you're gonna drive somebody nuts. You gotta be a person, you gotta let God fulfill you, let God fill you up, let God be who he is in your life. I don't know how the Lord have mercy. Somebody don't need to get married. Okay, here we go. He wasn't afraid to be alone with the sheep. He had proven his ability to save the sheep. He wasn't afraid to be there. He wasn't afraid to smell like sheep. <laughs> Come on. He wasn't afraid to walk in the, in the hot of the day and, put a, and find water for them. He wasn't afraid to let them find grassy pastures to eat at. He wasn't afraid to use his staff and pull them out of trouble. He wasn't afraid to knock them in the head and say, don't do it. He wasn't afraid of those yeah. things. He wasn't afraid to be a shepherd. Even though he was anointed to be king, he was still a shepherd on the outside of the house. Somebody help me a minute. Listen to me. Listen, the sheep didn't scare him. Bears didn't scare him. And lions didn't scare him. And nothing scares David. I love David. You know why? Because David, listen, I wrote this down about David. David had courage to act without weighing the consequences. Amen. He would just yes. run after it. Man. He would just go for it. Thank Have you. you ever been that passionate about anything? Have you ever been that passionate about a God that we just go for it? I don't care. I don't care. I'm just going for it. It doesn't matter to me what goes on in my life. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to live for God with everything that's in me. And not look around and say, well, what are they going to think if I go to church? Yeah. Nothing? Because yeah. the devil doesn't care if you go to church. Amen. The devil cares when you give your life to God. Praise God, yes. He didn't care Thank for you, church. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Thank you. Lord. A lot of people go to church, and we won't discuss their, that they're a blessing. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that go to church, but there's not a whole lot of people that give their lives. We give part. We give the not going to hell part. Preach, preacher! We go to, I don't want to go to hell, so I'm going to get saved a little bit more. Amen. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to give my life yet. I'm going to give my life yet. So he wasn't afraid. Sheep were his responsibility. We have some young Davids outside of the church today. We have some young, young Davids that are outside of the church world today. We say stuff like, I'm washed in the blood. Yes, praise God. We all know what that means, right? Amen. Amen. No? Okay, well, washed in the blood means you're saved because the blood of Jesus has cleansed you white as wool. You work Amen. black, and the blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross, washes us and Amen. cleanses our yes. soul. Thank you, Jesus. So you say to somebody, I'm washing the blood, and I don't know what that is. They're like, I'm not going to any church where I'm getting washed in blood. <laughs> Help me. Amen. Yes. Because we speak Christianese to each other. But David had a calling on his life, and David had an anointing on his life, but he wasn't yet 
in the house to receive the anointing. The whole, whole gist of what I'm telling you today is this. Is if we don't get hold of what it is that God has called us to do, we're never going to get the anointing that God has for us. Amen. We're always going to be on the outside looking in and Amen. saying, man, if I could just get inside, if I could just get inside, if I could just get where God had me be, if I could just do what God called me to be, maybe you can, but you have to do it. You have yes. to want to do it, and you have to do it. You yes. can't listen. Thank I you. can't live it for you. I can't, I can't, I can Thank preach you. at you and spit at you and scream at you and hop up and down and yell, and I can be your biggest cheerleader, but I cannot live it for you. I cannot Amen. get your anointing. I cannot get you in the house where you can get the anointing of God in your life Amen. only. And you can do God. that, and only yes. God can anoint you. I can't anoint Thank you, but God can anoint you. But yes. you've got to get in the place where the anointing is flowing. God. Yes, God. You have to. There's no other place to be. You can't do it by yourself. Thank you, Jesus. you cannot. Thank you, Jesus. I hear people all the time say, well, I'm just going to do it myself. Okay, that's a, I, you know what? That equals failure. Amen. I know you got a big C on your chest because you're a big Christian. <laughs> see my C? Yeah. I see this C. Big deal. You see this S? That means I'm going to fail because I'm stupid. You know, I try to do it myself. I, I can't do it myself. I can't do it myself. Listen, the sheep were his responsibility. The sheep were not only his responsibility, but they were his livelihood. And church, I'm going to talk to you right now about a pastor's perspective. And I want you to put your pastor glasses on. I saw, I saw a shirt the other day and I loved it. It said, no other job can you have where everybody else can tell you how to do your job better. <laughs> True. True. And I was like, I should buy that, but I'm not going to. And so, because it's just kind of hateful. But it's still, it was still, it was still true. No other job can you have where everybody knows how to do your job better. That's very true. But the sheep were his responsibility. The sheep were his livelihood. The sheep were his clothing. Thank you, Jesus. Hang on with me. Look at me. So I know you're still awake. Let me hear your head drop. Okay. The sheep were his clothing. They were protection from the outside in. David was caretaker of the sheep because once he got in the house, because I love this, and I skipped it, and I'm sorry, but I'm, trying, I'm pressed for time. But I love what I love what. Uh, what Samuel said. Samuel said, we're not sitting down until, he gets, until the boy gets in the house. Which tells me, we're not going to get comfortable until the boy gets in the house. We're not going to eat until the boy gets in the house. We're not drinking anything until the boy gets in the house. We're not doing anything until we get the people, the Davis from the outside, we get them in the inside because anointing's flowing in this house. Yes. And so with anointing, we've got to get our kids from that Thank place God. to this place. We yes, gotta, listen, it's you. not just the place. It's not just a physical building. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about getting them in the place where the anointing is flowing. If, it come, if it's coming from you, they need to be in your presence. Amen. Amen. If it's coming from this place, they need to be in the, in the presence of God. They yes. need to be where the anointing is flowing. They've got to be in the presence of God. Yes. They have to be. And so the anointing is all right. I, I skipped that part. I, I'm sorry about that. But after David was anointed, then David had to go back and, and wash sheep. But the sheep were not only his responsibility, they were his livelihood. And they provided him. He took care of them totally. And they provided him with clothing to protect him from the outside in. Are you with me? Praise God. Yes. Thank you. So guess what? A pastor's perspective. If we take care of our sheep, our sheep are supposed to provide us protection from the outside in. Amen. Oh, Jesus. They're protected from the outside elements. I, I'm going to say this, and I hope I don't offend anybody. If I do, I apologize in advance. But for most of you, I'm not your pastor, I'm your preacher. And I don't want to be just your stinking preacher. Amen. You can get preaching. I'll Amen. Get most of you I've known most of my life, so you see me as Jeff mm -hmm. in most instances. You use every excuse you can to get out of the sanctuary when I'm preaching. Because you don't really think I have anything to really contribute to your life. Now, the method of it is nice, but you really, some, some folks don't have that respect issue of pastor, preacher. 
And if you get a preacher's reward, that's great. But how about I get a prophet's reward? That's bad. That's why Jesus Amen. said it's hard for us to do to have to, to a prophet have any honor in his own house, his own land, country. Because it's hard. And I'm not, and I'm not getting on to you. I'm just telling you, it'd be hard for me as well. I understand that. I get it. I knew that. When I, I knew that going in. I knew that going in. Now, for some of you that have come here since I've been pastor, you didn't get raised here. I'm your pastor, and and you, I understand. I, there's a difference. There's a there's a there's a there's a there's a breaking point there. There's a there's yes. a cutoff point where I can tell whether I'm just your preacher or I'm your pastor because you just know. You just know. And for some of y'all that, that have been my, in my family forever and have, have been my church family forever, it's hard for you sometimes to switch on that just my pastor thing. And I understand that. I'm not mad at you. I understand that. What I'm telling you is this, though. If, if I'm going to be the pastor, I'm going to be your pastor, then you have to let me be your pastor. Amen. You have, Amen. To, you have to let me. You have to protect me. Yes, you have to protect me. Thank you, Jesus. Christ, Harold Turner Christ, is my God. pastor. He's 86 years old, will we, right? He's 87. He's 87 years old. Soon will be. And I will fight for that guy today. Amen. Because he's my pastor, not my preacher. You guys don't know this, and I'm going to tell you just a little bit of insight. But the last few years that the pastor was here, me and some other people, we did a lot of things behind the scenes so nobody else would know they weren't getting done. Because he's our pastor. Amen. Amen. And we didn't, we didn't want anybody to look and say anything negative about Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's a lot of us that did a lot of things behind the scenes that nobody ever knew. And we didn't say, uh, I did that. Can I get a receipt for that? I went and got eyes. Can I get $3 back from the church for that? We just did it because he's my pastor. You with me? You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference. He wasn't just my preacher. He was my pastor. He is my pastor. The other day he's my pastor. Still call him. It's going to be a sad day when I can't call him. Amen. It is. And I say, I want to say this. I protected him from a lot of things because he poured his life into me. Yes, thank you. For 31 Jesus. years. Thank you. And so I protected him from a lot of things because I didn't want him to be exposed. Does that make sense? Amen. Woo, that's good preaching. Come on. All right, I'll go on. I'll go on and leave you alone. The sheep were not only his responsibility, they were not only his livelihood, they were not only his calling, but they were his food. They were his food. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. They gave him his strength. Look at me. Amen. Everybody still love me? Amen. You have to go to heaven. Okay. I love you, but I don't like you. Okay. And so, they were his, the, the sheep were his strength. They were his nourishment. And they were his sustaining power. The sheep not only provided outside protection, but from the inside fed him. Come on, help me. They sustained him when he was weak. They sustained him and nourished him when he was hungry. Praise God. They helped him to go from one day to the next day. Are you with me? Sheep are not simply supposed to be taken care of, but they're also supposed to be givers of what they have. Sheep also are supposed to be givers of what? What God has given them to give. What is that? Wool for for clothing. Meat for nourishment. I don't know this for sure, but I'm sure somebody in the world drinks milk from a sheep because they're nasty. But anyway, whatever. And, but I guess you put enough chocolate on it and you drink anything. But, but listen, they're supposed to not only receive from the shepherd, but also give. To the shepherd. Praise God. Yes. Woo, Jesus help me. We have to be in this together. We have to be in this together. Now listen. The sheep were loved by the shepherd. 
They were seen as food to the enemies and profit to the owners, but love by the shepherd. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Sheep are not for, for Thank you. eating all. You don't just eat the whole herd. You have to have some to replenish, right? And whoever owns the sheep, they sell them, right? Yes. They, they sell them to make a profit. They don't do it because they just like sheep. They do it to sell it to make a profit. And with that profit, they buy lambs and they buy sheep and that they can have lambs with. And it's an ongoing process. And so I'm going to ask you, who, who owns you? I was bought with a price. Yes, hallelujah. Jesus bought me Thank with Christ. Yes. I am His. Praise God. Yes. I'm His and His alone. And the great, oh, and the, and the great Good Shepherd, Thank He you. loves me Thank because He He put you, you in my life and He put me in your life and He loves us. Amen. And He's trying to care for us. Yes. He's trying to care for us and I'm running out of time so fast. But the sheep were so loved by the shepherd that He would lay His life down for the sheep. Yes, God. The shepherd so loved them. The, the shepherd so loved and kept them that he would go without water so that the, the sheep could have water. He would go without food because there's a place on the other side of the hill. There's a place on the other side. I know there's green grass over there. Yeah, I know it's going to take me a while. I haven't eaten, but I'm going to take my shepherd. I'm going to take my herd over there because I know they'll get nourishment that they need on the other side of this mountain. I'll eat when I get home. Somebody help me just a minute. But the shepherds so loved them that they found every place that they could to pace, to make a place that the sheep were safe. And they grew. Praise God. And they were strong. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And Thank they were healthy. Oh, and they were cared for. Hear me. Thank you, Jesus. But the sheep also laid down their life for the shepherd. What do you mean? I don't know if you know this or not, but lamb chops don't come from a live sheep. They don't amputate. And then tape it back up. Sit in a bed for a while. A life has to be given for the shepherd to eat. A life has to be given for a shepherd to have nourishment. And what I, what I mean by that is this. The, great, the good shepherd, I call him the great shepherd. The great shepherd laid his life down for us. He expected us to be willing to lay our lives down for him. Praise God. If we're not willing to do that, Jesus. When a shepherd goes and he shears the sheep and they look like little pink things. They don't, look like, they don't look like anything, you know, there's nothing that looks like a sheep that's been sheared. I don't know what you can call it. Anyway. And they, and they, this, is, this is so good, I don't have time to do all of it. But the sheep were giving an offering to the shepherd. Amen. Amen. Praise With God. Me? Thank you. They're giving everything they have without they're giving them, without dying to the shepherd. And the shepherd takes the offering and he sells it or whatever he has to do to take care of the sheep. Amen. Until they're able. Come on, y'all with me? Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Right. I want to make sure y'all with me. Thank you, Jesus. And the offering goes to the shepherd. Yes. And the shepherd uses it as is needed to care for the sheep. Amen. Come on, Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Help me just a minute. Praise okay, God. Okay, listen, listen, listen. I'm almost done. Give me five minutes. I'm going to leave you alone. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to do this to make sure. You're sitting here in a pew today that was bought by somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. In 1977, these pews were put in here. The reason I know that is because there used to be a plaque on the back wall for everybody that gave hundred dollars that had their name. Okay, that's all the reason. That's all the reason I know that. 1977, we got new pews. You're sitting there, and a price was paid for your comfort. Amen. A price was paid for something else. And Jesus died and gave us. He paid that we could be saved, right? Amen. Thank you. The shepherd gave his life. 
that the sheep might live. Thank you. Thank you. If the sheep have to give their life Christ God. in order to have the relationship, Thank you, thank you Jesus. And the two shall become one. Come on Amen. now. Amen. Yes, thank you, God. I'm on the right hand of God. Yes. He is my all in all. Yes. I love him more than I love anything. I, love, I absolutely adore my wife, but she's second place to my king and my savior. Amen. She is, she is a wonderful wife and she's a wonderful woman and I love her more than anything on this planet. But understand me. Understand me. She can't pay for my sin. She can't Amen. lay her life down for me and make any difference in my soul. She can't do anything for me. Only God himself Amen. can send Thank his son Jesus. to the great shepherd to lay, to lay his life down for me that I could live. If you'd stand here free with me, I'll quit preaching. Amen. I want to thank you for being here today. I, want to, I, want to hope that, I hope this message gets into your spirit. But more than that, I hope you, get, you understand that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Janet, we can play something while you're standing here. Just because I saw you. Laid his life down for you. Because he's the great shepherd. He laid his life down for you. He loves you more than anything. He would do anything for you. But at, let me ask you the question now. Have you given your life to him? Oh, praise God. It's different just giving wool. Wool's an offering, and that's great. But Brother Jeff, I gave my offering. I gave my time. I'm on the roll, I'm on the roll book. I get all this stuff. I've been to church. I, that's great. But are you willing to give your life to sustain the shepherd? I don't know if you know this or not, but you laying down your life and say, yes, I'll serve you, God, with everything that's in me. Yes, God. I'll give you everything I've got. I'll yes, do everything I have. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll pour everything I have into you. When you do that, you know what that does? It produces sheep. Yes, God. Because he takes your life and he makes something out of it. And what happens is then, is then another sheep is born, and another, another sheep is born, and another sheep is born. And so we sustain the shepherd by giving our lives. The shepherd sustains us because he gave his life. But we sustain the shepherd by giving our lives. You with me? If you're in this house this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I would like to invite you this morning. I want to pour out my heart to you and say, listen, it's the best thing that you've ever done. It, it'll, it'll change you from the inside out. You'll never, you'll never rue the day you ever gave your life to God. I promise you. You'll never say, oh, I wish I had never done that. I promise you. If you do it with all your heart and say, yes, Brother Jeff, I need to know my shepherd because I want to hear his voice. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, God. If that's you this morning, I'd love to pray with you this morning. You raise your hand and say, Brother Jeff, please, please pray with me because I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't even have Kimmy here this morning to raise her hand. Kimmy gets saved every Sunday. I just love that kid. She has such a tender heart. We bow your head with me pray, Father. I've done my best. I've done my best. I've, I've given everything that, that you gave me to give. I've given everything that you gave me to give. I've given everything out of my spirit to my Father. Everything. Father, I pray right now there'll be one that, that, that doesn't know you, that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost come upon them right now. God, I, I, I don't want them to be able to sleep. I don't want them to be able to eat. I don't want them to be able to be comfortable until they give their heart to you, Father. I want the convicting, the convicting power of the Holy Ghost to come upon them. Because I, I'd rather be saved and comfortable. Saved and happy. I'd rather be saved, God. Father, I thank you for every family in this house today. Every family that's represented, God, I thank you for them. I pray, God, right now that the anointing of God fall in our lives. Lord, in this corporate anointing this morning, God, I pray blessing. Bless them, Father. Bless them, Father. Keep them. Let the anointing of God fall in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. 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 You're dismissed this morning. Love you so much. Thank you for being here. Come see us at 6 o'clock. Love you. Prayer meeting at 5. Prayer meeting at 5.